Well, it's been a little while since I did a automotive related video. Um, I'm really not working on cars much anymore other than out of necessity. Uh, so I haven't really had any projects that I could film that's automotive related, but I decided to do a little bit of a video on the Motorcraft 2152 barrel. I've had somebody ask me some questions about this, so I thought maybe I would show a few things on an actual carburetor. I must have between 2250s and 20, or 2150s and 2100s, I must have 10 or 12 of these carburetors laying around. This one here was the most convenient one to grab. It was on top of the 302 engine that came out of the uh, 78 Lincoln Versailles that I purchased specifically to pull the rear end out of to put in my race car. Now the special thing about the Lincoln Versailles rear end is it's a four nine inch with disc brakes that's also narrow. So I was able to put that underneath my um, 85 Capri without having to cut it down or anything. It actually fits under there perfectly. But anyways, this particular carburetor is what was on that engine, but it's this this car was a little bit of a hodgepodge. It was a 78 Versailles. I came to find out after I purchased it, which I bought it, like I said, I bought it specifically for the rear end, but I drove it for a year before I pulled the rear end out of it and scrapped the rest of the car. Um, it had a 72 302 in it with the 78 intake manifold. And this particular 2150 here, which is actually an 82 2150, so I don't know what was going on there. Somebody had was mixing and matching a bunch of junk to get the thing running by the sound of it. It actually had a single point distributor in it rather than electronic ignition, which is kind of interesting, which 72 it would. But this is the easiest one to grab, so this is the one I decided to used to do some demonstrating on. Just <clears throat> thought I would um, maybe point out a few of the items on this car right before I disassemble it. This here happens to be the accelerator pump. There's a diaphragm back underneath there. And a lot of these car rares, the 2100s, not necessarily the 2150s, and also the Autolite 4100, which is basically same as this, only it has um, secondaries for four barrel. Would have um, several holes along here, and also like this one does several holes in here to adjust your um, accelerator pump travel. You could adjust the ratio and the uh, actual volume a little bit through those different holes. And it kind of performs, I guess, a similar function to like the uh, the cam does on a Holly four barrel. As you can see on this here, this is a 1.21, which is one of the larger two barrels. Um, so this more than likely would have I'm trying to remember that probably would have come off of maybe a 351 Windsor. It might have been off of 302. I can't remember. I used to know. I used to have all this stuff known by heart, but anymore, kind of losing, kind of losing it, I guess. But E T U E two U E A K A. So it's an 82. Like I said, I used to know. I could tell you, 20 years ago, I could tell you exactly what all those numbers were and what all the revisions were and what it came out of and the whole works, but. I just don't do this anymore, and actually this carburetor sat on that engine since 1998, and that's probably about the last time I've really done much work on a 2150 motorcraft, so needless to say, I'm losing an awful lot of the knowledge that I used to have, but anyways, this vent right here, that goes to your charcoal canister, that's for venting away the vapors instead of letting it vapor, ventilate into the air. It goes into the charcoal canister. It's kind of an emissions function, more or less. Um, <clears throat> of course, you've got the choke system. We're not sure where the choke cap is. This would have had an electric choke on it. And this is your 
choke pull off when the choke is closed and you start the engine up that vacuum diaphragm pulls back and opens the choke up slightly you can adjust how much I can't remember I think it was usually like either eighth inch or quarter inch I can't remember I think eighth inch is what that would be set at to open up at that allows a little bit of additional air to come in once you actually get the engine started these two little holes right here are actually a high-speed fuel pullover system that is actually something you can do a little bit of tuning with if you need a little bit if you're trying to keep say better gas mileage but you'd like to have a little bit better say full throttle performance you could actually go in there and adjust the orifice on that of course you have to be careful because otherwise it gets way too rich Let's see here just some vacuum ports there Up underneath here we've got the idle mixture screws and then underneath this cap right here is where your power valve is I'll talk about that a little bit later and this has always been a little bit of a problem with the uh, Autolite Motorcraft carburetors. You're really thin in certain areas, like right here and right here. And it's very easy to get a vacuum leak there. And I'm trying to remember, I think the 4100s are pretty thin on the sides. I got several of them in those bins down underneath there, but I just, I'm not going to pull them out. But that's something to be very careful with. If you just buy like a standard Holly base gasket, more likely it's going to leak. You almost need the Ford Motorcraft style, which is going to be a little bit thicker. But then you also have to watch because if it's too thick and too wide, it ends up setting right on these screws right here. I've actually had that happen before, and I've actually taken these screws and used a low head screw instead of a standard high head screw to maybe give it a little extra clearance, depending upon how the gasket's cut. I've seen them come right out and then actually hold the carburetor up just slightly. This this screw will embed into the, usually get like that little, that quarter inch or half inch usually I guess quarter inch fiber gasket that comes with these, that black fiber gasket. I've seen these screws embed into there say like right on the edge and hold this up just a hair and you get a vacuum leak right across there. So that's something to look out for. Got your throttle plates. There's your idle transfer slot, kind of similar to what you would have in a Holly. You want to have your, basically you want to try and aim for your throttle to be just, to where just barely, <clears throat> just barely uncovers that slot and no more. You start getting into that too far, then you start pulling quite a bit of fuel through the idle system and your gas mileage will suffer. Oh, what else is there? Got your fast idle adjustment there. A few other items. You've got your hot air tube that goes there that helps assist with the uh, choke opening up along with the electric choke cap. For some reason, this, I must have maybe scavenged this off something, but normally you'll have the uh, uh, what tech do you call it the throttle kicker I guess here I, my swing here doesn't have it on it I must have robbed some parts off this for something else I can't remember what I was working on 15 years ago but must have been something but I'm going to start disassembling this a little bit so we can look inside oh, I've got the top off of this now um, you can see the the fuel pullover tube and you can do some adjusting on that you gotta be careful or you'll get way too rich I'd only go maybe a thousandth at a time if at all but 
down inside here you got your annular boosters and your whole booster cluster. Now if you notice if you look on my uh, <clears throat> video from a couple of years ago where I was rebuilding the 4010 carburetor how similar the Holly 4010 is to the Motorcraft carburetor. Got the microfill float in there and the nice thing about the 2150s are they've got the little torsion spring that helps stabilize that float a little bit. Pop that up out of there. There's your needle and seat. There's jets down inside there and you can see the top of the power valve which after sitting for 15 years is pretty stiff. Let's see what jets are in there. I can't I'm trying to look at that through the viewfinder. Looks like 50s maybe. Yeah. That seems to be a pretty standard jet in these 2150s. Seem like 50s or 52s in most of the ones I've disassembled for whatever reason. It seems like that's what they're calibrated to. So I'm going to unbolt this booster cluster. And we'll take a look inside there, see if I can get these jets out of here. I'll be back. Now I got the booster cluster out of there. It was a little bit of a struggle, but I got it out of there. It was kind of, I think it was kind of hung up on these little uh, adjust, little guides that hold everything centered. But this later 2150 has kind of a neat system on it it's a variable air bleed system for the high speed and it's cam operated and the cam basically pushes up on this plunger and what it does you've got these two tapered metering rods right here and if you see it see how much how little of the hole that it fills up there as you push that up notice how much it closes off that hole well basically that's one form of enrichment for this carburetor by closing off those high speed air bleeds and you can adjust them a little bit by moving these arms bending these arms up and down you don't want to go too crazy with it and I've always thought that if I really for some reason wanted to performance mod one of these carburetors which if I did it would be on say like a tri-power system you could actually have somebody make you a different taper of, a, of these metering rods and you could really fine tune your enrichment that way that's a pretty neat setup but you've got your bleeds for your idle there and your um, main air bleeds. You've got your orifice right there and your idle pickup tube that gives you your idle fuel. You can adjust them. You can drill them slightly larger. But again, the bad part about these carburetors is hard to go back once you go bigger. So you better make sure you need to go bigger and you better only go in about thousandths increments but, and of course we got the weight and the check ball down in there not sure what else we want to really look at I guess I could pull this accelerator pump off I'll show you a couple things down there <clears throat> well there's with the accelerator pump diaphragm removed there's a diaphragm. Obviously this stuff's old so none of it's any good. You wouldn't want to reuse any of it, but I'm just pulling it apart just to show you. And then you got this return spring that goes in there. And then you've got this silicon disc that's very important. If it happens to fall out, then basically your fuel's not going to stay in the, in the actual accelerator pump well. 
when you hit the throttle it's just going to blow all right back out into the fuel bowl and also another way you can adjust the volume on this is let's see if I can, I can set this down there there we go right here there is an orifice a lot of people don't know about this you can take that orifice and if for some reason you want less volume say you have seem to have pretty good throttle response and you're wanting to get better gas mileage well you can increase the size of that orifice and you will have less um, volume for your um, accelerator pump or conversely you can make that smaller and have more volume but you have to have at least some sort of an orifice there that bleeds off the uh, the uh, vapor that is created whenever your um, whenever the fuel starts to heat up and your carburetor starts to heat up. If you don't have that there, and you don't bleed off the vapors, then you'll start causing fuel to flow out your squirt nozzles driving down the road. And then your mileage will really suffer. It'll start dripping, dripping out of there, and then you've got really bad gas mileage. But these carburetors, nobody understands them, or very few people understand them, but they're actually quite adjustable in various different ways. And as an example of that, here's a power valve, and this one here happens to be referenced through an internal vacuum source. Some of these will have a cap that has an external vacuum source and that comes in handy if you're turbocharging it's a little bit easier to get the vacuum source from where you need it but these carburetors mainly came with a two-stage power valve which is something that everybody back then since they didn't understand them pulled them out threw them away said they were junk well they really weren't um, it was another tuning aid. They, there was actually a series of these two-stage power valves that Ford produced, and you could really fine-tune the enrichment of this of your engine with the two-stage power valve. Basically, what happens is in the first stage, it enriches say like a small amount, and then the second stage it enriches a full amount, like this power valve would. So you could, uh, for example go with say like a slightly smaller carburetor jet use a two-stage power valve and have it open slightly earlier and combine that with a different maybe a different setting for your high-speed air bleeds and also a different setting for your high speed pullover and you could adjust to one of these carburetors to have good gas mileage driving slowly down the road be under power being rich enough to make good good power going up a hill or full throttle trying to pass or whatever but I'm not really going to go into a huge amount of detail on this I just thought I'd show a few things here I'd, actually I have to get going I got some other stuff I need to do but I just thought I'd rip this thing apart real quick and sh show a few things of this carburetor. Maybe it'd be interesting to somebody or maybe not.